Hi, this is Joe again with another uh, movie review, and this time we'll be doing to continue the movie reviews of the Star Wars films. The last one, the video I did was close with episode 4, New Hope. And now we'll be doing what's generally considered by critics as the best uh, Star Wars film, which of course is episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back. And of course, if you had, because this movie had, quote unquote, the shocking ending, which Darth Vader reveals that he's those kind of his father. Of course, if you had seen the other uh, films, the prequels in particular, uh, first, before you see this trilogy, does that come as a surprise? Of course, when I first saw this movie back in 1980, it was a huge shock. Because, actually, of course, we've been told by Obi Wan Kenobi that Darth Vader is supposed to have killed uh, Luke Skywalker's father. Well, of course, in, in the end of the movie, of course, it was revealed that on the Darth Vader says, "Luke, I am your father." And of course, the scene, of course, is I mean, the family sitting in the lightsaber scene. He tells him, "Hey, I am your father." And of course, there was a big shock. I remember when we saw this movie after we were first watching it, we came home and I was all oh, my father packed and went all the way home. How can it be his father? Because we were told that he killed, he was killed off. And, you, know, before, you know, during the first film, we, was told, we were told, the audience was told that Darth Vader killed the father. And of course, there was a big, big shock, a big turning point. But this is the best movie in, in the whole series. And it was directed not by George Lucas, but Irma Krishna, who was one of George Lucas's film professors when, when George Lucas went to law, went to film school, law school, I said film school. And of course, he did a great job on the, on, on this film. The only thing when George Lucas had someone else direct the movie, the movie is much better. They didn't have all that much of an overacting or the lousy dialogue. Because they, uh, the director will fix, well, when George Lucas fixed the, fixed the uh, script. That's what happened with, happened with, it, with Empire Strikes Back. And this was the first Star Wars movie. Where, other than episode 3, when you had the big battle scene in the, begin in the beginning of the film. And so, well, Episode two, we had a big one big battle scene or fight scene after the other. And this one, you had the big battle scene in the beginning of the film. When you have, of course, in the back of the DVD, you have the ads or the uh, premier on the uh, premier walkers from across the, the field and half where the rebels were, and they had this big attack for for. Pretty long uh, battle scene, even longer than, than it was in the first film. So this was a much longer fight scene. And of course, throughout the rest of the movie, you had one drop fight sequence after the other one with the Empire chasing, that, chasing the men and the Falcon through the asteroid field. And you had one great sequence after another, but it was built up to that. Instead of uh, one continuing fight scene. Everything. That's what the, the original series was good because they, they built up to the action scene. And then I have one continuous action scene after the other with very low, uh, low time. And that's what made the original trilogy good because they had the low scenes. Of course, what the main thing of the world is that Darth Vader was looking for the rebels and particularly Luke Skywalker. And when you see the opening crawl, this was also the first movie you know, when it originally came out. When you saw the episode title on the on the screen, this was when episode four when the original Star Wars film came out in 1977. It didn't have an episode number, and also there wasn't given a title to the film. It wasn't until when it was re-released, re and then of course when it came on television, and then of course when the original VHS version came out. In the 80s, and then you had you know, the title episode four, New Hope. 
now of course since the special edition version and this is the special edition version of Empire Strikes Back and of course I want to discuss the changes of course this was, this was the first movie that actually had a title Empire Strikes Back instead of saying Star Wars 2 or Star Wars 5 or something he said episode 5 Empire Strikes Back this was the first Star Wars movie that actually had a title to it People just say, oh, we saw Empire Strikes Back, we saw Star Wars Empire Strikes Back, and of course Return of the Jedi. Well, the, this is a special edition version, and this was changed more so on the 2004 DVD set, which is what this is. You know, so, the, so this again, this is from the 2004 DVD set. And the changes that they did on this one, most notably, was the scene where you First saw, well, first see the emperor as a as a holographic image, which he which he never really saw the emperor. He was just mentioned in the first and the original Star Wars film. And that was the first time you actually get to see him, and he was changed to the to the actor who played the emperor in the prequels and in Episode Six in Return of the Jedi. It's the same actor. Um, the same actor who played the Emperor in Return of the Jedi was the same actor who played him in the prequels. So of course to keep the continuity going, because they had had hired a different actor to play the Emperor in episode in Empire Strikes Back. So what he did was, what George Lucas did to keep the continuity going, he changed the face of the Emperor during the the scene where Darth Vader is talking to the Emperor, saying, "Can you?" turn Luke, Luke Skywalker, I mean, the son of Skywalker must not become a Jedi, you know, in that scene. And not only was the Emperor's face changed to the actor who played him in the prequels, but also the dialogue was changed a little bit. It's a much lower paced scene than, than the original version, you know, the original 1980 version. And of course that kind of bottom because it was much slower much slower pace and they did change the dialogue to make it continue with the scene. They said, Oh, and believe that this is the young rebel who destroyed the Death Star. I believe it's the same guy. Which of course that line was not in the original version. And also what was it changed was added when the Emperor says I believe that this rebel, this boy, is the offspring of Anakin Skywalker. And of course, Darth Vader responds to that and says, "How can that be true?" And how can that? Be? And says, "How can that be?" And the Emperor says, "Oh well, since your feelings, Darth Vader, that you know it to be true." And of course, that he believes that you know, Luke was the was his son, and he had a Padme. And of course, this also kind of reveals that Luke and Leia were sisters. And no matter what. That says brother and sister. Because you can tell there was one particular scene in the end where you kinda of tell was what Leia hear me. And after the big fight scene, he's hanging on the bottom of the Cloud City and was hanging on the on his pipes. And then Leia sensed that and said, Oh let's go back. I know where Luke is, let's go back. And that's how they went back in the in the in the Falcon and they went back and they say, Don Luke. And they, or they picked them up. And then um, that's what that you know, added scene was. And of course the other added scene was when you had the, the snow monster who attacked Luke in the first few minutes of episode in Empire Strikes Back. He, when he attacked him you see the big head uh, and he hit that cloud and he attacked Luke and dragged him to his cave. And the original version you didn't really see the monster that much. You saw him like maybe they broke couple of seconds when you attack Luke and then when Luke uh, chops his arm off you see the arm fall to the ground and you just see the monster from like the waist down you see a little bit of the legs and from the waist down you didn't see his you know his face or anything else well in the in the special edition version you see the monster eating something else eating another carcass in, in the cave and then you see when Luke using 
the Jedi telekinesis to move his lightsaber and uh, hook himself. When the monster of the day, he, he picks his head up and then he starts walking to where Luke was, where he was keeping Luke. And then you, when, uh, when Luke chops his arm off, you see the monster without the without the arm, and with his other hand, you know, holding his shoulder like this, and, and screaming and cut his arm off. That was really the, you know, the end scenes, the scenes that, but the dialogue scene with, with Darth Vader and the Emperor, that was changed for, for this DVD, particular DVD version. Uh, because the dialogue scene, I, I don't know if it was in the original, uh, Special edition version, the 1997 version, but that changed for the 2000. That definitely changed for the 2004 version. That I do know. That I'm sure of. And then they had that particular scene. And the only other scene they, they add was with the effects. Was when they were in the cloud sitting, they added extra effects. But when you see those those pod cars, those flying pod cars going around the city, and that's before the uh, apartment scene, which you. Leia and Han. That was before they were confirmed with Vader and the and the dinner scene. When we were talking about the the people, the people was missing and that Chewie found you know, brought the wreckage of people, what was left of people to the room they were in or the apartment they were in. They they had that. And you saw the clap the, the power club going by the apartment window. That was the only little major See that you saw add detail in the clouds and with, with the sunsets and everything else. Those are only really other change, but the rest of the movie is pretty much pretty much the same, except for the dialogue scene and you saw the monster. But the rest of the movie is pretty much the same as it was in 1980. So that's why very few little changes. But this was the best, best of the best of movies. And as a matter of fact, I do have a toy version of. You know, the Imperial Walker, I still have it. You know, 30, what is it, 33 years later, I still have this, this toy. Which, of course, was just, you know, my parents bought, bought for me. For, for a holiday present, but bought, bought this for me. And, actually, at that time, I was collecting the figures, the action figures, like, from Kenner Toys. And I never had a, a vehicle, and I always wanted to get a vehicle for for the for the. I wanted to get like the Man and the Falcon or a Tie Fighter. And when I saw, you know, the, the Walkers, I said, wow, they were really cool, cool, cool to have. And my parents were looking all over the place to get it for me, and they surprised me for for a while. You know, the holiday season, they, they surprised me with this. So and I still have it; it still works. Uh, surprise! Surprise! All these years later, it's still, still works. It's still in pretty good shape. So, but it was because I kept it in good shape. Because it was one of the few toys that I had that, that never, they, had, they didn't break. When I was a kid. But I still, but I still have this, and uh, because of the scene, because this was the best uh, movie series. Of course, this also introduced the world to Boba Fett. And there's also another change I want to bring up. The Boba Fett character, he, he was originally played by Jeremy Bullock in, in, in episode in Empire Strikes Back, but also he, he tries the role in, in Return of the Jedi, and he gets killed in Return, he dies in Return of the Jedi. And he was also one of the few villains, other than the Darth Vader and the Emperor, that appeared in more than one film. And by this movie, he actually had dialogue. We only had a couple of lines, and when he f seen when he Darth Vader was hiring a whole bunch of bounty hunters, and when Ken and Toys made the bounty hunters, he only made like about like five or six of the bounty hunters total originally, and they happen to have all the actual figures of the bounty hunters as well, including of course, including of course Boba Fett, that was the most famous one, and because he was the primary bounty hunter. I was like Vito in, in episode 4. And of course he had all these lines. And he says, uh, What if he dies? It means a lot to, it means a lot to me. And he had this one scene that says, he's no, good, he's no good to be dead. 
because this man was torturing the scene where, where Vader captures Luke and Leia I mean not Luke and Leia Leia and Han and Chewie and he was torturing Han and he says you can have uh, Captain Solo if, and you, know, as for, as you can have Captain Solo after I have Skywalker and Boba Fett says he's no good to me dead and then they had the scene where he when they froze Han Solo in Harmony he says what if he dies you know, and he's worth a lot to me he said the Empire will compensate you if he dies and he said okay you'll put, you'll put him in and of course when they did the reboot that's when they hired a different actor to play Jango Fett of course the one of the sequence of the prequels was Boba Fett is, was a clone of Jango Fett wasn't even his actual son son was a clone of him so what they did was they changed the voice of the act the original actor who played and they, they didn't keep the voice they kept they changed the voice from Jeremy Bullock's performance to the actor who played Jango Fett in episode 2 so what you hear was you hear that actors I don't, know, I don't remember the guy's name was um, but they changed the voice to the actor who played Jango Fett in episode 2 so they, so they did that there was another change they, they did but other than that the movie was pretty much pretty much the same thing so but they had more changes in, them, in episode 6 which I'm going to be discussing next on my next on my next review so this is my, my review of episode Five, but also I still have big memories of watching, particularly the original trilogy, as most Star Wars fans have. And that's why when Joe Lucas made the prequels, the criticism was made. Some, well, at least so. I don't think some of it, all of it is justified. Some of it was, not all of it. But, you know, if you watch my reviews, you, you, you know why. Let me review of, of Vampire Specs back. Please like the video, comment on it. Please uh, subscribe to my channel, YouTube channel. And I'll catch you next time with my final review of the Star Wars series, which is of course Return of the Jedi. Catch you later.